you know, usually it's Kevin Rudd or Malcolm Turnbull or ScoMo or Paul Keating gracing us, enchanting us with their return to public life. But no, this week was special. This week, we had Tony Abbott and Joe Hockey. It was a triumphant return from the dynamic duo, like the muddy hand protruding from the grave in the horror movie. But the week kicked off, of course, with none other than Peter Dutton, the leader of the opposition, and the long and winding road that leads to Peter's nuclear costings. It has never disappeared. We've seen that road before. It was with us again this week. In fact, with bated breath, a nation awaited. On Monday, it was meant to come at the Cedar Lunch in Sydney when Peter was addressing the business community. His costings, it was going to happen. But then that day in the AFR, what happened? This story, this exclusive story appeared. We'll just quote from it momentarily. In a speech to a committee for economic development lunch in Sydney on Monday, Mr Dutton will reject Labor's attacks on the coalition energy plans as juvenile, but will not release its detailed costings. So lambasting the Labor Party, the government, for being juvenile while not (laughs) releasing hundreds of days down the track after he promised he would the nuclear costings because it's all about the costings you see because it doesn't work but anyway what's the scam with the corporate media these days are they little more really than just a dumping place for drops and leaks from government and institutions press releases published one day early with an exclusive tag on them in this case no nothing was going to happen (laughs) Good old Jane Hume. Yes, Jane was vying again this week for this prestigious title of Scam of the Week because here she was on Sky News, Sky News Israelia, saying that we could develop, that Australia could develop a nuclear plant within three years. Now, (laughs) the extremely bullish prediction so far coming from former lobbyist and shadow energy man Teddy O'Brien, Ted had it at 10 years based on the experience of some autocratic government in the Middle East, Abu Dhabi, Bahrain, one of those. Ten years O'Brien had it, totally bullish, but Jane managed to cut that to three years. So on Jane's reckoning to Sky News, we could be nuclear in, let's say they get into government by 2028. Of course, the real time frame is probably 20 years if the recent experience of the US and the UK are any example. So Jane, of course, seems to be a very strong contender week after week for Scam of the Week. But this week, her colleague Angus said, hold my beer, said Angus, because the CPI was out and the CPI, the inflation numbers were fantastic, good for the government, because of course they showed inflation falling. But Angus described the inflation reduction from 3.5% annually to 2.7% as being, quote, no closer to inflation sustainably coming within the target range than we were yesterday. Well, Angus might have not, not have known this, but of course the RBA target range is 2 to 3%. So it is within range. It's lucky that Angus had used that get out of jail free card word sustainably. He's hoping, no doubt, that it's going to go up inflation again in the next release because then they'd have more of a chance of getting into government. But for the government, this is not incredibly good news because the RBA is showing no sign that they want to ease interest rates, at least yet, even though the markets have factored it in, in the futures markets. Target range, 2 to 3%. So we are 0.8% closer. It is a good result for the government, the inflation numbers mid this week. But one person who will never come, who will never come under pressure is the former Treasurer, Joe Hockey. And the reason that Joe will never come under pressure is because he has lived high on the hog all of his life, mollycoddled on the public teat with high-paying public service jobs. Don't know whether he's ever actually been in the private sector, Joe, but certainly he does have a penchant for holding forth, hand on heart, about the way people should be conducting their affairs in the real world. 
although not having been in the real world himself, more of a sort of Narnia of government type of guy, really. In any case, Joe, and we can't work out why they did this, but the National Press Club invited him to speak. Not that he's not worth listening to, the old Joe, but why would you give a lobbyist with undisclosed clients the National Press Club lunch gig? I mean, does he have nuclear clients? Who are his healthcare clients? Who are his clients? He's a lobbyist. Anyway, he got up on Tuesday and gave the speech at lunch. Had a few cracks, a bit of a laugh at cutting the ABC's budget. And he talked up his mate Donald Trump. Just bizarre stuff. And the inevitability, of course, of nuclear energy, which, come on, Joe, have you got any nuclear energy clients? Are you trying to drum up a bit of business there? But he was right on AUKUS. He did warn about AUKUS. His line was, let's actually, you know, show me the money stuff. If we're going to do a deal like this and throw billions at the US to build their own submarines, we've got to get something in return, something concrete some guarantee that we will actually get some. So his warning should be well heeded there because if Joe, is, who's like buried in the establishment, is warning about AUKUS, AUKUS hasn't got many friends. It certainly doesn't. Anyway, it was great to hear from Tony because Tony, hard on the heels of Joe's appearance, Tony Abbott himself, big Tony, he appeared on Sky News, Israelia, the genocide cheerleading channel, and called for Australia, wait for it, to make a practical contribution towards peace in the Middle East, instead of, quote, wringing our hands while Israel fights, quote, apocalyptic death cults. So Tony's, <laughs> Tony's angle, of course, is send in some ships to the Middle East. Let's get properly involved. Let's roll up the, ste- the, the sleeves and get properly involved in this conflict. Of course, the only problem is, Tony, we're on the wrong side, mate. We're on the genocide side. So he's not one for nuance, the old Tony, of course. It's all about goodies and baddies, sort of 1950 stuff. Cops and robbers. Trouble is, he gets his goodies and baddies mixed up. The apocalyptic death cult people he refers to are people basically struggling not to be tortured, burnt alive, uh, have their children murdered and their land stolen. That's who he's talking about there. Resistance movements. That's what he's talking about. Ordinary people getting killed. Of course, they're just not the race, probably, that Tony would like them to be. Probably not white enough. In any case, Tony is a very sage, how do we describe this, inverse correlator. Because you know if Tony is saying something, the opposite is very likely to be true. And again, he didn't disappoint with this this week. Because, of course, having a crack at the students and these apocalyptic death cult cheerleaders these people supporting the resistance. Tony, I'll give you the heads up, mate. You've been on the wrong side of everything. And the students and the protesters have been on the right side. They were on the right side of Vietnam. They were on the right side of Iraq, where millions were killed in both these conflicts. And now they're on the right side of Palestinians and Lebanese people who've just been invaded and are getting genocided as well, indiscriminately, despite the IDF claims. Tony, you are on the wrong side, buddy. Mate. Tony, of course, would have been on the apartheid side back in South Africa days, you know. Same deal today. Nelson Mandela, of course, was regarded as a terrorist. Did you know that, Tony? Did you regard Nelson Mandela as a terrorist too? What was your position? We could easily find that out. But, I mean, this is the essence of what's going on here, mate. You get it wrong so much, as does Sky News. That's why Sky News had you on. Sky News, the genocide cheerleaders. But, you know, scam of the week, we're not going to give it to you. We're not going to grace this nonsense of yours, this genocide cheerleading, this genocide apologia with our distinguished scam of the week because you've totally lost the plot, you and Sky News and the Israelian and so on. We're going to give it to Marky Dreyfus, the Attorney General, because Mark, he's been clawing at the prize for a while, but this week, of course, he lost to our very own transparency warrior, Rex Patrick, in court in a landmark decision. The Attorney General, Mark, was appealing a decision and spending hundreds of thousands of taxpayer dollars doing it. The dispute began with Rex trying to get the sports rort. Remember Bridget McKenzie's sports rorts documents? He'd been FOIing those and been waiting three or four years to get those. And so this became quite an issue and it ended up being appealed uh, by Mark Dreyfus, whose claim was that ministers, 
and ministerial officers should be able to destroy documents, yes, shred documents when they leave, leave office. Of course, they should not be able to do that because the office is greater than the human being who was voted in momentarily to occupy it, Mark. So Mark went down in the screaming flames, the Attorney General losing a case to Rex Patrick. Not a good look, having spent money QCing up, or sorry, KCing up. Sorry about that, Mark. So here we are. Mark trying, you know, all about transparency from opposition, you know, let's have transparency in government. When they get there, of course, they're absolutely, you know, ridiculously untransparent. So it was a huge win for Rex Patrick. Congratulations to Rex and a loss for the Attorney General, who also, as we predicted, just to finish on a high note, couldn't go much lower this high note, the AML. 17 years, 17 years they've been dithering over the AML legislation tranche two, which captures lawyers, accountants, and property developers, stops them, well, makes them disclose where they're getting their money from, just like banks and bullion dealers have to already, right? And casinos. The world has moved this way. There is pressure from international authorities on this, indisputably, indubitably, a white collar criminal paradise, Australia, for money laundering and it forces up property prices. So finally, the legislation gets introduced to Parliament by Mark a couple of weeks ago, but guess what? It's being shoveled off to an inquiry, to a Senate inquiry, where it's going to be delayed, as we prognosticated, probably for a few more months. And the pressure internationally is mounting, so we think something has got to be done. But why would you just continue to be so cravenly bullied by vested interests, legal lobbyists, accountancy lobbyists, that's big four, and the property sector, property council. So cravenly in their pockets, the government, from donations and lobbying, that they cannot introduce this critical legislation 17 years after they promised that they would. So, Marky Dreyfus, come on down, son, you win. Scam of the week. You've been scammed on the AML, and Rex has whipped you in court while you've been trying to Fight for the right to shred documents. Not a good week for Marky Mark. Please like, share and comment in the section below and thank you and thank you for your support.